Hey folks, it's your main man Sabado. Uh, welcome or welcome back to the channel. If you've been here before, welcome back to the channel. If this is your first time, welcome to the channel. Uh, this is a channel where I talk all things uh, early retirement. And although we talk about early retirement, it's never my expectation that everybody retires early, but it is my expectation that you live your best life. And so I try to share my journey and my perspectives in hopes that it will inspire you to live the life that you want to live and actually know that somebody out there has done it. So on that note, we'll go ahead and let's get into it. I was thinking today about content that I wanted to put up and I, I looked at my YouTube analytics and saw that I hit the magic number today. Um, I hit 500 subscribers and originally I was going to do some type of giveaway when I got to 500 subscribers and then I saw a YouTube video that talked about the community guidelines and some of the hot water you can get into from copyright and selling and giveaways if you don't do them right and taking the channel off of line and I just didn't think that was the right thing to do so I with all of the people that are constantly engaged in the channel I would hate for us to lose the community that we've built because I screwed something up and so I'm not going to do that, so I apologize in advance for anybody that was waiting, but I have another gift for you today, and I'm going to share with you four ways that having a YouTube channel uh, enhanced my life and, and retirement, and it, they're not ways that I thought. Uh, I thought starting a YouTube channel was just going to be a, a talking head that comes up, tells a bunch of stories, and I used to watch YouTube channels a lot and think to myself, what kind of person starts a YouTube channel? Because you don't think that, at least I don't think, that most people want to hear from me. I, I've said it before and I say it again. I use the old Tupac philosophy. I don't think people want to hear from me because I'm just another black man caught up in the mix. And there's not much special to that. But when you peel it all back and I look at the journey and how I got to where I am, there are some special pieces of that that I like to share, and I, I think we're really starting to make a dent in inspiring people to get to, to where it is they want to be in their life, whether it's retiring today, retiring tomorrow, or just making sure that they refocus back on the things that are important to them and live the life they want to live. So uh, the first thing the, that happened that YouTube did that really enhanced my life, uh, and, or enhanced my retirement, I should say, is it gave me a real opportunity to process the past. Many of you may or may not have known that I was for a long time a human resources professional. I worked in some great organizations doing some great things and have had a lot of impact on a lot of people. There are some people that were in my leadership seminars. So for example, in one role, I had, I had the opportunity to lead the learning and development function across the well, the global learning and development function for a large multinational organization. And so I was responsible for the United States, Canada, and Puerto Rico, and I helped start the program. I had left the organization and come back and continued to help build some measurement and help understand the true impact of that, but really have a opportunity to help people. And besides that, I had a couple of other jobs, and some jobs were more difficult than others, but my most recent role. And I'm not going to bash the organization. I think different organizations function differently and I function different than different organizations. But my last role before retiring was a fairly traumatic experience for me because I went in knowing what I can do, knowing the scale of what can be done, understanding how to get it done. But it was just a grind getting it done. Now, I will say that everything we tried to do and that I listed out, we actually accomplished. And it was a lot of really positive results. But because people hadn't experienced an HR function in that way, it was really difficult. Well, that created a lot of baggage and a lot of angst for me and a lot of trauma. And I hate using trauma because I think it's an overused term, but it was a lot of trauma. And I had a lot of anger and a lot of resentment. And I needed a avenue or a vehicle to get that out. And by talking to people on this YouTube channel, you start to realize that even though that experience was difficult, it was good because I learned some things that can help others. There are, uh, there are 
experiences that I had there that I wouldn't wish on somebody else, but I think it's important that other people know about those experiences. Again, it's not in a way of bashing anything because I don't think bashing anybody for any purpose is generally constructive, but I'm able to translate those into usable ways that have helped some of you. And I, I know that because in the comments, many of you have commented on things that um, came from or were a direct result of my translation of those experiences into into a constructive format. And so I've been able to really process the past, which releases, releases my stress and helps me be a more peaceful person on the inside and out and be a better friend, human being, and provides an example of, you know, helping people that are going through difficult situations look at situations in a way that are going to be constructive for them as opposed to just dwelling on, on negativity in the past. The second thing that having a YouTube channel has done for me, and this relates particularly to retirement, is it's given me a sense of purpose. I've always been a person, again, I, I, I say this and my wife laughs at me when I say this, but, you know, what's the song? I'm just an average man with an average life. I work from nine to five. Hey, hell, I paid a price. And people around me always tell me, have always told me, you're not average. You're not just the average Joe. You're not just working a nine to five. And after a while, when I started to see some of the things I was able to do through the course of my career, in fact, my mentor, one of the individuals that really catapulted my career for me or helped me catapult my career, told me the first time I met him, I said, you know, I'm just an average guy. And he says, Sabado, you're not average. And I'd continue to say that I was average. And the next thing you know, I'm getting these huge responsibilities and driving global impact for the second largest employer in the world. So it's, but what happens is once you realize that you have the opportunity to have a positive impact on people's lives, it then goes from a surprise to a responsibility. And so I think I've mentioned to many of you before that my personal mission statement is to uplift the human condition in any way that I can. Am I perfect with that? No. Are there things that if I look back, I would do differently? Yes. Are there people that maybe have been hurt by things that I've done or said or behaviors that I've exhibited? Sure. None of us are perfect. However, I've had the opportunity to impact a lot of people's lives in a, in a major way. Uh, and that's in the functions that I had, the roles that I had, my work as an elementary school counselor, all of which I talk about in previous experiences, but once I retired, the question I had was, how am I going to make that, how am I going to continue that forward? One of the last conversations that I had with my boss before I retired is he said, well, how, you're not going to, what are you going to do? And I told him that I'm leaving the organization, but the work isn't done. And so when you have a mission statement that is as broad and as direct and as impactful as uplifting the human condition, there's going to be a way to do it. I just have to figure out a way. And I thought substitute teaching was going to be the way, but it wasn't. But I start, then I discovered the opportunity to come onto a YouTube channel and try that out. And over the last, I think I started in April and we're now in October. So that's six months. So six months in, I have 500 plus of you that look forward to seeing my content and that engage in my content on a regular basis. And I've got about 100,000 people that have looked at the videos and had some impression of the video at one way or the other. And so to me, I'm not doing this to make money. I'm doing this to have an impact. And that impact is a sense of purpose because the, the difference between the older me and the younger me is the younger me was ripping and roaring. I didn't know any different because I just knew what I felt and what I, the, the limited experience that I had. But now the older me understands the experiences that I had, can take the, the negative things and turn those into positives um, and, and, can, and, and can really help people get to uh, places that they want to get to because they are able to understand the, some of the mistakes that I've made. And I've, as I've mentioned before, I've learned from other people that have made mistakes. I talk about my homeless friend, uh, John, that I met at the bus stop and the mistakes that he made and he told me not to do and other friends that have gone down different paths. And I said, you know, I'm not going to do that. My, my neighbor, Paul, that hurt his back working at UPS and, and, and the experience of the Army recruiter saying you have to get up at 5 o'clock to go run so I didn't join the Army. 
And even insofar as playing basketball hurting my knee and then having to make a critical decision, all of these things are things that for one of the trillions of YouTube users, I think are going to resonate with some people. And so I'm able to have that purpose, create that purpose. I could live the leisurely life that most retired people lead, but I do have the opportunity to have people listen to my story and that really gives me a sense of purpose and, and, and I don't know that I would have had that kind of reach if it wasn't for the YouTube channel. So it's uh, it's really creating purpose for me and hopefully inspiring you. Uh, the third one is building community. As distributed as we all are on YouTube and I look at the analytics on a regular basis I was floored. I, I looked at the countries of people that are watching these videos, and I'll tell you, I was I was absolutely humbled. I was I was floored. I, I I have people in countries that I didn't even know speak spoke English. I have people in Malaysia. I have people in Singapore. Um, I have people in some of the African countries. I have people in Europe. I have people all around that are watching these videos. People from all around the country and. You know, as polarized as we are as a country, and, and again, I don't talk politics and I, I don't get into all that, but as polarized as we are as a country, I, I feel like this channel is a unifying force. I think on a, on a different, a couple of different levels. Number one, uh, it, it's a, it really shows people that look like me that there's an opportunity for them in, in situations where people might feel hopeless. But on the other side of that coin, there's people that don't look like me that understand that people that look like me do exist. And so, you know, a lot of the preconceived notions that we have of people are based on fear because if they don't live in our neighborhood and we don't see people on a regular basis or in the, the diversity, equity, inclusion circles, they call that proximity. And so if a person doesn't have proximity, it doesn't mean you're going to hate the person, but it means that you're just not going to be as potentially you're not going to be as comfortable because you don't know as much about them because you don't interact. And so this channel provides an opportunity not just for you to interact with me, but to interact all the way around. I was just in conversations with somebody a couple of weeks ago from Florida. And Florida and California couldn't be much different except for the fact that we have beaches. But you know, we have a common ground. And I think what the world needs now is really just finding some common ground. And I think this YouTube channel has the opportunity to do that because it's not about any one thing. I do believe that I have the opportunity to make information uh, accessible to different people, but I think those different people are exactly that, are different people. And I, I think the idea for me is, is if he can do it, then I can do it. And if he can do it, nothing that he's talking about is incredibly complicated, so I can do it. And you know, even if I can't do what he did, he still validates the fact that I'm doing the best that I can and just wants me to live the best life that I can live. And, you know, that's what it all comes down to, because there's going to be some people that work until they die. But as long as they're doing it because they want to do it and they understand that there's some choice and they are making that choice, then that's fine, because there's this is a judgment free zone here. I think we all have differing opinions, differing perspectives, uh, differing approaches. We've been socialized differently. I talk about us being institutionalized to work. Uh, but there's all of these different perspectives that sit out there that um, that help us build commu community. And I'll, I'll tell you, one of the challenges that I had was um, when I was growing up, my parents, they came from Chattanooga, Tennessee. They were really intentional about what they did in terms of raising me. They wanted me to speak a certain way. They wanted me to, to educate me a certain way. They wanted me to have certain perspectives. And that didn't necessarily align with the experience that a lot of other people that looked like me had. And so in some cases, I was isolated. But then growing up in a neighborhood where you had all these different cultures, I certainly wasn't any of those other cultures as well. So then I was isolated there. And so it's hard sometimes because you try to figure out how can I connect with somebody that's like me? And I learned very early on that people that are like me aren't always just the people that look like me. Sure, there are. And I do think there is power and that type of connectivity. So I'm not saying anything wrong with that, but I'm saying there's that power extends beyond because at the end of the day, regardless of what we feel about different people, we all have to live together in this country and we all have a responsibility to make it work. And I think the more mechanisms that we have 
to bring us to better together, the better off we're going to be longer term. I believe that, have always believed that. And I think that's when you look at my family, when you take a look at my friends, it's you could just call me Sabado United Nations Esquire. Just kidding. But uh, it's 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 if you're a good person, you're a good person. If you have good perspectives, you have good perspectives. If I don't agree with you, we could disagree and still be friends. But um, it's really about building that community. And I, I think that this is really a vehicle um, for that. And I think it, it goes beyond culture. It's socioeconomics and, and everything else. So so it's been able to build community. And then the last uh, piece that I wanted to share today is that just the opportunity that I've had to inspire others. You know, I think I've mentioned to you before that when I was in college, I hurt my knee playing basketball. A lot of people that I went to school with, not a lot, but went to school because they were playing basketball. And I hurt my knee and I had to figure out what I was going to do. And I, I made it my point to say that I wanted to be the person that was an average, normal, working class person that was going to go to college for the sole purpose of showing others that they can do it too. Because if I can do it, they can do it. I'll tell you a little story about me. When I was in sixth grade, I got arrested. I'm not going to tell you for what. I'm not going to go into all that. But I got arrested. And then I got through that. And then when I was a freshman in high school, I got arrested again. And my, when I, when I, the second time I got arrested, I had a choice. I either get a a 2.0 grade point average and play basketball or I go to jail. And so I didn't go to jail. So I ended up playing basketball, ended up with a 3.17. Well, through the course of all of that time, there was a bunch of stuff that went on and people's parents, my friend's parents had opinions of me and they weren't positive. And I'll tell you that one day, um, and this is after, I think people expect, when you start to grow to 6A, people expect you're going to play basketball. They expect you're going to be an athlete. They expect all these, just kind of the stereotypical stuff for a tall black dude. So, or maybe a tall person in general. I know somebody in the comments is going to say, well, just a tall person, but we'll leave that as it, we'll let that one sit for now. But it's funny because there were three groups of people that, were surprised when they found out I was going to graduate from college. So one of them was a, there was a lady, or I'm sorry, I had a friend of mine named Louis Ramirez. No, I'm sorry. Let me go back. I had my fifth grade teacher. Her name was Mrs. Gilly. And Mrs. Gilly, on the day of my graduation, my father sees Mrs. Gilly in the grocery store. And my dad knew Mrs. Gilly because when I was in fifth grade, she used, they used to call me into the class or call them into the class because I was getting in trouble all the time. My dad sees Mrs. Gilly at the Payless. And so they're at Payless. And for those of you that don't know, Payless was like a a CVS or a Walgreens. It's just called Payless. I don't know if it's still around anymore. If it is, let me know in the comments. But I think you get the idea. So they saw each other in Payless. So my dad says to her, you know, my son's going to be graduating from college. You know, she told my dad that she didn't believe me or she didn't believe him. And said he absolutely is, which to me was kind of interesting because I knew other things about Mrs. Gilly's family that were, that would have probably created some haterade. So I just leave it at that, but didn't believe me. Then I had a friend named Louis Ramirez and Louis is rest in peace, but Louis Ramirez and I were thick as thieves when we were in middle school and high school. And again, I used to get into a lot of trouble. His parents, I don't believe them. And they, Louis says, yeah, you know, uh, Sabado is um, graduating from San Jose State. They didn't believe him. And ironically, um, I graduated from school. Stacy, or I'm sorry, Mrs. Gilly's kids never graduated from college. And neither did Mr. Ramirez's kids, Louis' parents' kids. And then I had another friend of mine that was actually involved when I got arrested the second time and he told his dad you know Sabado's graduating from or Sabado graduated from college and his father didn't believe him and so I I had this life where 
I did a bunch of mischievous stuff. None of it was like murder or anything like that. It was just stupid stuff, stupid childhood mischief. But I don't, I don't want to make that the, the 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 focus of the story. But it's funny because for me, I realize that things kind of just come and go. The way people perceive you just kind of comes and goes. And the fact that I was arrested twice by the time I was fifteen what kind of life and, you know, the fact that I was adopted, all of these factors, what kind of life am I going to have? And so for me to overcome that and to be able to graduate from college, number one was a big thing because once I hurt my knee, they're like, oh yeah, it's just because he's playing basketball. And then once I got past that, I graduated. Then it got to the place where I started working and I was working with elementary school kids and we were mainstreaming kids. It was a day treatment program where they were sectioned off. I talked about it in another video. But then we were able to mainstream them because I was able to connect with these kids and help them understand how to behave, to modify some of their behavior. Now, some of the stuff I couldn't do because there were some psychological things going on. But for those that were just behavioral, I connected with that because I had a behavioral problem. I was a behavioral problem when I was a kid. I was labeled when I was a kid. And then when I got to um, uh, being a professional, I just realized I don't have any particular sets of technical skills. I'm not an engineer. I'm not a musician. I'm, I obviously didn't make it to the Lakers or the, the Golden State Warriors, but I did have the ability to connect with people and help motivate people and position people in, in situations that would help them be successful. And so I was able to do that. And then I also had the, the gift of being able to orate, uh, to speak. And so I was able to speak. And I, I think when I was speaking, I, I think I mentioned in an earlier video, but I was Speaking, I was going around the country, uh, United States, Canada, and Puerto Rico uh, for 40 weeks a year, talking to groups of 25 to 32 people every week for three days straight. And to keep the attention of adults for 24 hours a week, three, eight hours a day, Tuesdays, Wednesdays, and Thursdays is, is a big deal. And the fact that I was able to do that and just be this kid from the east side that nobody believed in except for my parents and the people that I met along the way. And a lot of people didn't really start believing in me until they started seeing some success. So people that believed in me because they saw the success, I don't think are people that believed in me, but people that just said, you know, you're just not a normal guy. Those are the people. And so the, the fact that I have the opportunity now to get on this channel and share those things and inspire those stories and let people know, not this big grandiose, I'm super intelligent and made all these good decisions things, but just some of the small baby steps, some of the, sh the small perspectives that might seem insignificant that inspire others to me is just incredibly, incredibly um, w warming for me. I just, it's whenever I get a comment like that and somebody says, Hey, Sabado, I just came across your channel and I like what you say, or I, Sabado, I came across your channel and I was inspired. Or, hey, Salvador, you know, I really connect with that or I resonate with that. And, I, you know, I don't get a lot of negative comments. And if I do, I mean, people, there's, you know, trolls will troll and haters will hate. But at the end of the day, 99% of the, the feedback is positive unless somebody just doesn't resonate. But the fact that I'm able to uh, continue to inspire people just doing what I do and, and just by being me. Uh, my wife always tells me that, all you have to do is be yourself. And she's been telling me that since we met. And I just never felt that I was good enough because I wasn't anything special. And she would tell me that I'm special. And so the fact that we're here today with 500 plus subscribers in, in a six month period and, and people that are watching these videos really to me is a, uh, it, number one, it, it proves her right again because she's always right. And I, I hate to say that because it sounds arrogant, but it's, it's, it's just, it's, 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 I don't know what the word is. I, it's, it's inspiring. The, the fact that it's inspiring you is inspiring to me. And, and the fact that, you know, we discuss a bunch of different topics. I mean, it's, I, and, and I always try to keep it real. So those are the, you know, so when I look at, when I, when I look at how my retirement has been enhanced by you, it may almost makes you wish I would have retired sooner, but I, probably couldn't have afforded that. So that's, that's, that's the pragmatic answer to that. Cause again, I always keep it real, but you know, it gave me an opportunity really to process the past. So a lot of the stuff in the past, except for when I talk about it here, 
I don't even think about it. It's it's kind of like the the saying that I use in the other one that one day you wake up, you eat breakfast, you brush your teeth, and you realize you hadn't thought about that thing, and at that point you realize that you can forget. It's it's I don't think about the stuff, but I think a lot of the reason I don't think about some of those difficult situations is because I was able to process it out. I think they called this in therapy, they call this catharsis. Um, the, the second way it enhanced my life is it gave me uh, a real sense of purpose because, you know, I was just talking to my best friend yesterday and I said, you know, I can't even stop the channel now because if I do, there's people that I think are inspired by the stuff that we, that we discuss. And it's, it's just, it's, it's starting to really gain, you know, some momentum. Because uh, 500 people, uh, it's not it's not a mega channel. But again, I've, like I've said before, I'm not looking for a mega channel. It's not about trying to make a bunch of money doing this. And it's about keeping it real with you. Because unfortunately, a lot of times we go out, and we ask questions, we get the best version of something as opposed to the real version of it. And I want to give you the real version of whatever it is that we're talking about. Um, number three is it, is it builds community. And I've had the opportunity to really, in a real way. Once I got out of the workforce, take an even stronger stand of building community. Because again, it's, you know, my channel is not a black channel. It's not a white channel. It's not an American channel. It's a channel for like-minded people who are looking to live their best life. Because again, we're not all going to retire early, but we're going to live our best lives. And all people want is somebody to talk to them with respect, talk to them with dignity, and take them serious. And I consider all of you, I know I haven't met all of you personally, but I consider you all friends. And, and one of my mantras is that if I care enough about you to answer the question, it's always going to be the truth. And I think that's evidenced by my responses to the comments or putting up com uh, content based on some of the stuff that we've talked about or some of the questions that you've had. And then the, the last way it's enhanced my life is it's given me the opportunity to inspire others. I, it's, it's, it's not about me. I, and I've never been a person that lived my life about me. It was always about what can I do for others. And a lot of times, even when people would disagree with my course of action, they would disagree with my course of action because they didn't understand how what was happening would benefit them. And there's been situations personally and professionally that once I'm out, people start to see, you know, that Salvador actually knew what he was talking about. Oh, you know, he was right. But sometimes it's just too late because life waits for no person. So on that note, um, I'm going to go ahead and, and cut it out. But if you found this content useful or in any way, consider subscribing to the channel. I put content up a lot. I put up a lot of content. I put up these long form videos, um, usually twice a week. And um, I put up a bunch of shorts. I'll take these and I'll break them up into shorts so that way you can get some of the pertinent points and stay motivated during the week because, you know, again, the idea here is not, and I, I'll say it again, and I, I don't want to sound like a broken record, but the idea isn't, that everyone's going to be able to retire early because the fact of the matter is, is life is hard out there for a player, but we can all live our best lives and that's going to look different for different people. Um, and so my goal is to help inspire you to live the life that you want to live by sharing some of the perspectives that I've had based on my broad ranges of experience. And people can have feel whatever they want to feel about what it is that I'm saying. But the fact of the matter is, is I retired at 51 and I'm living a, a good life, and I did it the right way, and there's nothing about me that's flashy. We talk about my T-shirts. We talk about all kinds of stuff because I only wear about five T-shirts uh, at any given time, and if you go back through my videos, you can always see that, But and I'm going to buy some new ones too just to fake some of you out. But yeah, feel free to subscribe to the channel, and uh, you know, and, if, and, and let me know where you're from. Uh, you know, one of the things that's fascinating to me is just knowing where people are from, because it's as I started to realize that there was a lot of reach, I started to realize that, you know, we have a lot of people from a lot of different places with a lot of different perspectives, all listening to the same stuff and, and, and leave your thoughts in the comments because other people read those comments. I had one today. I had one question as an example, and I know this is a long winded outro, but I'm, I'm giving it to you anyway. I had one person that had asked me about retiring and and their path and then somebody else jumped in and gave them a specific resource that was in their area that they can use to help them organize their their thoughts so i don't need anything from that I, the channel itself was just a catalyst for that and so it's about having that dialogue so on that note uh have a good rest of your day um and uh i will talk to you soon